whole idea was to create a social hub where teachers would uh, socialise in the club, would see the club as being part of their uh, lives. The night would go on until the early hours with teachers here debating and arguing and teasing out the issues that were important both in education and in the trade union affairs. I think what's so special about this club is the fact that it's a 250 year old Georgian house in the middle of Dublin city and yes at any time of the day you can come in and it's just a break from the city and the noise and the bustle. It's where you meet your own. Dublin teachers are a fortunate lot. Since 1923, they've had their own special place to socialise and relax over a pint. But they do a lot more than that. The world's oldest teachers club has helped change the course of Irish education, politics and history. The teachers club was founded at the same time just about as the Irish Free State and they are related in the sense that there was a new cultural emphasis on the Irish language in the schools. We were coming from a system that was dominated by the British and all of a sudden we had a new state and there was great sense of enthusiasm and people wanted to try new things and particularly they wanted a place to meet. The teachers were coming together in Dublin to develop their Irish language skills and a number of men and women teachers uh, decided that they following their course in Dublin, that they would expand this out a little bit into something more permanent. The founding committee might have sported formal dress and fancy hats, but early club meetings were held under Spartan conditions. There was no electricity in this building when they founded it. The initial meetings were held, as some of the minutes say, with candles stuck in the necks of bottles to provide light. So the determination to go on uh, and build such a tremendous cultural and social entity uh, with that background was, was really admirable. Little did they think how the club would have changed over the years and how it would have developed, but the club changed like Ireland changed, ever changing. Under the club's constitution, two thirds of the membership have to be primary school teachers. And conveniently, the club building is right next to the Irish National Teachers Organization, or INTO, which represents the primary school sector. The INTO as a trade union has been closely associated uh, with the Teachers Club because of the fact that all our meetings were held here, particularly in the Dublin area, and all our activities were organised, not from our head office, but from our, our club here. Sometimes decisions that were about to be made uh, around an executive table with the union, very often they were discussed the night before over a pint of Guinness, and it was regarded as a den where people uh, conspired, counted votes, or thought of what might be the best procedural way to handle a meeting the following day. Despite its Republican leanings, the club recognises its debt to an extraordinary Englishman, Veer Foster, who spent most of his family fortune supporting Irish education. Veer Foster, in a sense, is the father of teaching uh, in this state the father of the Irish National Teachers' Organisation, and in that sense, indirectly, uh, a parent of the club. Remarkable philanthropist. He assisted more than 2,000 schools from his own fortunes. He was an outstanding individual, and um, we were sorry that uh, he ended in a pauper's grave in Belfast, but we had nothing to do with that. But we have remembered him by um, commissioning two lovely pieces of stained glass in our building. The union that Vera Foster had founded began to flex its muscles in 1946 when Dublin teachers went on strike for better paying conditions and a fairer assessment of their teaching practice. The pickets included a young teacher, Joseph O'Driscoll. The strike came about as a result of discontent among teachers in the way they were treated by the Department of Education. The club became the focal point of the strike because this is where all the teachers met. The club was the central focus of everything. Teachers in Dublin on strike coming in here every single day to sign on uh, for their strike pay in the teachers club. 
The eight-month dispute was funded by the 90% of primary school teachers based elsewhere in Ireland who continued working. They contributed one-tenth of their salaries to the strike fund. But when the action ended, it seemed the Dublin teachers had lost, having failed to win a single concession. The government refused even to consider meeting us. We went back on the very same scale as we left. They were defeated in the short term, but long term they built a huge solidarity, strength of purpose, that won many victories in the years afterwards. The inspectorial system changed, everything changed. Salaries were improved considerably, and we certainly benefited. The strike made teachers realise that they had political muscle to flex. And where better to plot and plan a new political party than the Teachers' Club? Clan na Poblachta, which was a party which took part in the first ever inter-party government in this state in 1948, um, was fundamentally founded in this club. It's uh, the people who, who began the, the party uh, had those preliminary discussions here. They asked all their fellow trade unionists to join that party. Many of them actually stood for our House of Parliament and were successful. The party itself had an existence of only 10 or 12 years, but it was in government in the state uh, for four or five of those years. And uh, quite a significant party in terms of being economically and socially progressive, uh, while also having, a, a fundamental, um, having its roots fundamentally in the Republican nationalist sentiment in the country. But the club has never been just about politics. Culture has always been on the agenda too. The theatre downstairs was restored about five years ago from just a grotty old basement to a 65-seat theatre, which is well suited to small amateur drama groups and a youth theatre group, which I've been involved with. And we've used it on a number of occasions for summer courses and a drama festival. What's that? What's that? Good morrow, Uncle Pandaret. Good morrow, Cousin Cresset. What do you talk of? The Royal Dublin Shakes are celebrating a special year in the life of um, one William Shakespeare, and uh, they're in our little theatre, which is also prospering down at the bowels of this building. They should take heed of Troilus. I can tell them that too. What, is he angry too? What? Troilus? Oh, Troilus is the better man of the two. <laughs> Jupiter, there's no comparison. I'm a member of the Teachers Musical Society and we use this place as a base for our rehearsals, which take place usually at the weekends, which is wonderful. They do all their fundraising and all of their preparation for the show here at the club. And then of course when we have our run of our show, which is in a theatre just around the corner, so you get a huge amount of nearly every school in Dublin would be popping around to see the show and afterwards they're all made extremely welcome here at the bar. <laughs> The Teachers Musical Society are following in the footsteps of some rather august company. James Joyce uh, had his singing lessons in this very room where we're now sitting and the people from whom this building was bought were involved with choirs and with music throughout the city and James Joyce came to this building with these same, these are the original mirrors uh, and had his singing lessons in these rooms. We're not sure how expert James Joyce was in the tin whistle but music lessons remain a popular pursuit. Later on in the evening, we will have a guitar class. One, two, three, four. Put the third finger in on the F sharp. Slide up. Then open. Then back again to the one and two. All right, very good. Give yourself a round of applause. And every Thursday, we start off by having retired teachers to have their weekly game of bridge and learn a little bit more. They have a tutor in attendance. When I retired from teaching, I came to play bridge in the club to preserve my mental faculties. I enjoy every minute of it, even though the memory isn't great, it's improving. 
Well, the club has played a very big role in my life. I joined it when I came as a young teacher to Dublin, and since I retired as an honorary member of the INTO, I come to meetings here still. The club has played a huge part in my life uh, ever since I um, came to Dublin and uh, joined as a very young teacher in, I think, about 1966. Since I retired, I took up bridge here, and now for me, it's a nice place to come once a week, and it's like having a nice staff that you meet once a week. Most of these bridge players were teaching in the 1980s, when salaries in Ireland were still low compared to those in the rest of the EU. The three teaching unions, the INTO for primary and two others representing secondary, decided to bring their members out on strike but they needed a united front if they were to succeed. In the 1980s, uh, there was a dispute uh, involving all three teacher unions uh, concerning a pay award which the government refused to honour, and that was organised from here. And we established a joint committee between the three uh, unions. Uh, I was secretary of that committee. We met here. All our meetings were held in the teachers' club. Because it was neutral ground, because teachers from all unions came to here, uh, because they all knew that uh, in the club they came as equals uh, and they could organise together as a single unit from here rather than doing it from what is actually next door, which is the INTO headquarters. The batons and the placards were made here. All the arrangements for the day of action in Crow Park, uh, on, which, on, on, on which we brought in uh, 24,000 members on that day. Uh, so the club is a vital and integral part uh, of the uh, tr teachers' trade union as well as uh, the social life of teachers. The dispute was resolved with teachers winning a 10% pay rise the government thereafter moved social issues and teachers' rights higher up the political agenda. Meanwhile, some of those strikers could draw on savings, which they had made as a result of another club initiative. The credit union was founded in these premises uh, in the 1980s, at a time when credit was tight for teachers. So they decided to do something about this themselves, pool their resources, uh, and found this, or this cooperative non-profit organisation. Yes, I am a member of the credit union and have been for years. I began, I suppose, when I took life seriously and began to realise that I should start building a little nest egg somewhere. And this was a very convenient place. So many teachers, their car is the credit union car. Uh, their house extension is the credit union extension. It's been a remarkable success. This club may have looked after their members' jobs and wallets, but for many, it has served as an inspiration in their professional lives and added to the richness of their private lives. It's played a huge part, some of it which I know my mother wouldn't want to know about because above all else it is a social club. I met my wife Joan here in the Teachers Club uh, in 1967, over 40 years ago, uh, at a dance on a Sunday night. Later on in life when I retired, I made better use of the club I think than I ever did before. It's a great place and I love it very much.